that covered up here? No. Hmm? That's the speaker. Kenny's going to help you along. Well, you Ken, well, Kenny, you're going to help me, all right? Yeah, Kenny Ken sings pretty. Down by the old mill stream. Sing it, Ken. Where I first met you <laughs> with your eyes <laughs> of blue. You wore king of to. It was then I knew that I first loved you. You were sixteen, my village queen, down by the old mill stream. Did you help him, Ken? You tried to do the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, think, I used to get sing, but I can't anymore. Good singer. But I, I knew all the old songs. That's the songs your dad mean. liked, and I like, and your uh, your aunts like your your aunt Florence, Henry, Eva. They all like those old songs. When Dorothy comes down, I'm going to sing her a few of them because I can't sing anymore. But she wants me to sing while she copies them. Oh, sure. So I, I thought I would, but to be the old timers like. It's just an old shanty in old shanty town. The roof is so slanting, it covers the ground. Just a tumble down shack by an old railroad track. Like a millionaire's mansion, it's calling me back. I'd give up a palace if I were a king. It is more than a palace, it's my everything. There's a queen waiting there with a silvery crown in a shanty, an old shanty town. Now if you want one, a parody of what I made of, of this one. It's a parody that I made myself. It's kind of thing with It's, uh, I forget now how this goes. I can't think of it now. Well, I can sing you one, though, that's something familiar to it. You ever hear it when, uh, uh, It's so long since I sang some of them, but uh, 
one is there. Oh yeah. When you were a baby, we used to all tell you time, rock you to sleep every night. Those two arms are empty now, they've grown old and gray. Why don't you go home to stay? And maybe your mother, like she baby you, back in your baby days. Baby, your mother is lonesome and blue, waiting for you and needing you too. That debt of love forever you can't never pay. Go take her in your arms and kiss her tears away. And baby, your mother, like she babied you, back in your baby days. That's an old one. I used to go into, into a bar, and if I wanted free beer, none of the old guys were around at that time, I started singing that song and I got all the beer I wanted to drink, mm. just for free. And then they'd go out, part of them go out crying. That's right, I'd sing them that song. That's a fact, right up here in Penroy one time, years ago when it was a town, even. In the oil fields and them places I'd go, and these old guys working in there, boy, they'd cry their eyes out when I'd be half drunk on a Sunday. And I'd be productive and I'd sing them that song, I'd say to Bill and Mary, listen, you want me to have them crying? Go ahead, Bill would say. And I'd sing that song. And boy, up would come the beer for all three of us, just like that. You know, everybody buying us drinks. Couldn't drink them all. No, boy. <laughs> no. How did you ever get through Monday? Huh? How did you get through Monday? I didn't do all that drinking. We just drank one or two and that was it. We took off before they murdered me. <laughs> <laughs> but here's one that I, that I learned while I was in the Army Hospital and I only heard it sang once. And I learned every word of it because I did love music and I could, just, at that time I could sing. Not anymore, but I could then. And it's, uh, <clears throat> I sang it one time in Eagles Club in Van Nuys, California, and I brought them out of the bar to listen. I could still sing, and I wasn't drinking. I could still sing pretty good. And this was one of my favorite tunes by Bing Crosby, and he put it on the map. And it was, uh, let me think, got to get it now. Um, hmm. mm -hmm. There's so many of them that I can't think about. Anyway, I can, when, once I think of them, I can sing them to a, to a way, to a, a part, partly, but not to too much, not too good. Uh, yeah, RCA. Made in I can't time. think of them. Yeah. Uh, Radio Corporation of America. Yeah, oh, yes. When I Lost You, you ever hear? I, help me sing it. I lost the sunshine and rose. I lost the heaven of a blue. Can you sing? I lost the beautiful rainbow. I lost the morning dew. I lost the angel who gave me summer the whole winter through. But I lost the gladness that brought me to sadness when I lost you. That was Crosby's number one, one of them. And I, I learned that one, just listening to this man, his name was Bill, and he said, if you like this tune, clap your hands. He was a big heavy set guy. He came out of out of Wichita Falls to the, or not Wichita Falls, but Springfield to the Army Hospital. And I listened to him that one song, and boy, did I clap my hands. And I could have got up and sang the whole thing right behind him. I knew it just that quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learned a lot of them just that quick. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this music I got here today. Now, you think you heard Kenny on the, on the organ? Mm -hmm. Where'd I get out the old 78s and have him play for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, on the organ. But there's another one. There, there's so many now, like... Uh, that's out of uh, gone. They don't sing anymore. You don't hear them anymore. And they're beautiful old, old tunes, you know, like uh, well, when you wore a tulip and I wore a, a big red rose. Alma likes that one, you know. But did you ever know, did you ever know the Umbrella Man? No, that fellow wasn't around when I was singing. 
but I need that, that song, the Umbrella no. Man. Two Lum Lum? No. You know, no. the funniest thing, uh, my foster father, you know, go about a Norwegian, mm -hmm. and he'd hold his grandchildren on his lap and sing them songs. Yeah. You know, he'd sing old Irish songs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know any old Irish songs, no. He liked old Irish. Songs. I only know the um, old American songs and, and the old, well, the old but songs, like my sister's. Were, were yeah. songs about Ireland, you know, like yeah. Laura, Laura, Laura. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, Bing Crosby sang. Yeah. 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 Bing Crosby was Irish, wasn't he? Bing Crosby? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got a, some of his records with that on. Uh, maybe you've got some of them in there, I don't know. And a bunch I give, did I give you a bunch? No, you, you gave me a, you gave me a songs. Is that all I gave you? Well, it was, it was Olga that took a bunch yeah, of records Thomas. out from me. I'll give you some more, I'll give you some. Uh, but uh, the uh, the old songs, not to get a lot of them, you know. Now there's, uh, what is it? Now there's another one that I used to sing a lot. But some of them my sisters knew, you know, way back. And I can't think of them right now. You know, our uh, boy that's at home, Randy, he went to a garage sale and he bought a big box full of old sheet music. Now this was music. Yeah from the piano and violin, mm -hmm. because this was from a lady who had been a violin player. Yeah. But some of it, there was one old song, it was so old, I remember hearing it on an old phonograph record that my foster parents had. And I can't even remember the name of the song, but it was written back in 1911. Yeah, well, and it was a popular song, yeah, sung well, by the people of those days. You know, in the, and I can't remember it now, I wish I would have brought it along. Now uh, here's one that my sisters, I sang a lot of my songs, but my sisters used to sing when they were young people. A lot of them my mother knew, you know. It was like this one. Uh, I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's teaching her how. I wonder who's looking into her eyes. Scheming schemes, telling lies. I wonder who's buying the wine For those lips that I used to call mine I wondered if she ever tells him about -a me I wonder who's kissing her now See? This is the kind I'm going to sing for Dorothy when she comes because they're from my sisters, from my mother, way back and the sidewalks in New York, I forgot all of that. I don't know all of them anymore. Stuff like that. But there's so many of these other little, little later songs that I used to sing that when I was growing up that I liked to hear. They were dance music and stuff like that. But, uh, no, they, uh, like I say, I had the chance to go to more major bows. This young rancher, I was singing up in a nightclub out of, it was north of uh, the oil fields up by Oilmont up in there, out of Cut Bank, up that way somewhere. I forget just where it was, the first time I ever was in, and they had a big dance hall in this beer parlor, a big one. And I was singing these songs, and I wasn't drinking. I was with these Minnesota boys, they were great friends of mine, these Norwegian boys I was telling you about. They were close friends of mine. And we were up there together. We all had each a beer, that's all we'd had drank or nothing, so I wasn't drunk or anything. And we didn't get drunk either. But the boys told the bartender, he said, I bet he can stop that dance music in there. The bartender looked at him and laughed. He said, if he can, I'll buy, him a, buy you all a beer. So he said, sing us a song, will you, buddy? And I said, yeah, you don't have to buy any beer. I'll sing you a song. You want to hear a song? And that door was open into the dance floor. And there was about a dozen couples in there dancing at the time. And I started out. And when I did, that music shut off. And they all came out. And about that time, the door opened up. And then come this young father, his grandfather had died and left him all his cattle, his ranch and everything else out here. And he walked up to me, he said, you haven't been drinking, have you? And I said, no. I said, I don't have to drink to sing. And I said, I can sing if you want me to sing. And I sang that one for Big Crosby, uh, When I Lost You. I sang that one for him. And you know, he couldn't get over that. And he said, right away, he was a big husky young man. He said, if you go to Major Bowles in New York, he said, I'll sing you, I'll get you a chance to get in there, he said, and I'll pay all your expenses back and down, whether you win, lose, or draw, and he said, I've heard Sinatra, I've heard a few of them, they went to him, he said, and boy, he said, you can do as good as Sinatra can any time, it's not better, that's what he told me, and he said, I'll pay all your expenses, 
But I and the boys were having too good a time playing around. We didn't have to go anywhere, so I didn't go, see? Mm -hmm. And I only sang in different places, like down there at the Eagles Club that time, down there at the, down there at the, in, in Van Nuys, she was there. I'm pretty sure it was down there with me at that time. And, then, and Glenn, they, he was kind of shirt tail relatives to us. They belonged to the Eagles, we didn't. Never have. I've never belonged to any of those things, clubs. But he come up and he said, I knew he could do it. He could play the banjo pretty good too. He could play a piano a little bit and everything. Pardon me, this never done. He said, I knew he could do it. If I could only get him to sing, he said, I knew he could do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's years ago down there in California. Oh, God, that's probably been uh, 15, 16 years ago. Oh, no, I don't have a voice. Anymore. No, I, mean, I can't carry it out. I don't have that. I, I fill up in here. And, uh, that maybe used to be there. I can't carry it. You're saying, you're saying, you're saying a lot when you were younger, before your dad knew. Oh, no, you, should, no, no. you and your dad should have teamed up. Yeah, well, I was five years old. I could sing things he couldn't play on. I was five years old, see, and that's yeah. why we never teamed up. With that. No, but I mean, like, <laughs> oh, you were old Yeah, if I'd have been old enough, yeah. Yeah, if I'd have been old enough, yeah. yeah, have been old enough but yes. I don't know what, I don't know how old I was when he died, because I don't know when he died or where he is or anything. Yeah, that was him who died in I don't think it was. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Because there was a picture. I saw a picture. He was all out in Washington and all over there. Yeah. You know, it was a picture of the Minneapolis Tribune. Yeah. In the, the uh, archives of the Minneapolis Public Library of the man who was along with the place of Grace Moore. And that looks like that picture that you sent me of him. Well, it sure does. He was quite a guy. I'll tell you that. He was quite a pianist. I know, because I've listened to him. I sat on top of the piano in the old saloon days. He, I was four years old, and he'd be taking those keys. He could play ragtime, any kind of classical, semi-classical, jazz, anything you wanted. And never put a sheet of music up there and they play, play it to perfection. It was all up here. And there's what... I'm going to tell you something, kid. And I don't mean maybe. When, if she had her fingers back, you heard this girl play, you never heard anybody. Nobody. I don't care who they were. They took lessons or anything. You play that like that and Emma are yours. And I don't mean maybe. She, She's a pal here, and boy, she knew music. Henrietta could play. She could play pretty good. Eva could play a little bit. And uh, that's the only two that I know. But uh, when it came to, to uh, Henrietta could play good. I mean good. All by ear. And Emma played all by ear. She played for her son in his dance orchestra and her grandson when they were short of a pianist. She had a grandson, Donald's boy, your second cousin. They had both had their own dance bands, kid. You betcha, and they were jazz players from way back when they kept to playing music. And that Donald Tryon, her son, on that trombone, they, I've never heard a trombonist could play like that guy could, and I've heard a lot of them. He played in the dance band down along the coast, all along the coast. Donnie did, and him and Phyllis was first married. But he didn't want to play. He wanted to come back. He figured he'd make more money on the farm and stuff like that, which he couldn't anyhow. But he got his own dance band started. started he t trained his own son how to play that uh, that trumpet. And I'll tell you something else. That boy, he's married to an Indian gal. He's got three daughters down on the gone around Billings. You know, they parted. That's what they did. But they all they, 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 those girls think there's nothing like their father. And they had a dance band that was traveling through the whole country, a big dance band. And they, and they got they got a chance to play in Billings, Montana. And this guy had lost his drummer, somehow or another. He, he uh, was took sick or something, or was in a lawsuit or something. He couldn't play the drums. So he, he called up Donner and asked this guy. He said, I need a drummer when I get there. And I'll be there for about four or five nights, but I need a drummer. A good one, if you can pick one out. So this guy had run the hall. He said, I know just the man you want. He said, he's the second Gene Kruba. If you know who Kruba is. All right. He says he's a second Gene Cooper. He said he's a trumpet player, but he's terrific on the drums. He said, you, until you hear him, you won't realize it. So he uh, got in there and tried Danny out, and he'd come back and he told this guy. He said, uh, today, he said, where'd this kid come from? Well, he said, just a young Montana cop hunter from up north. You mean they have him in a stick and play like that? The fellow said, man, you ain't heard any music until you heard either down in Louisiana or Montana. 
He said, these kids up here can't play music. He said, if they're musicians, they can play it. So he played with them a while, and then he took them, he went on the trip with them, from North Dakota and different places. I think they went from here to Bismarck or someplace. And he wanted to keep him on, but Danny didn't want it. He wanted to come back. He, he was had his family and everything, and he could do better out here. They keep traveling around. He'd have to take the whole family and everything and cross the lot, and he was getting paid so much. So he'd come back. No, neither one of them have a dance band anymore. Of course, Danny ain't no boy anymore. He's not, not your age anymore. I would say pretty close to it, yeah. But he's a long lane kid, and he's a heck of a good kid. But boy, they had dance bands. And this loyal Brendan, this Norwegian, that buddy of mine, I grew up in Flatville, I tell you, because, you know, yesterday, about playing the piano, he was good. And, uh, but he played nothing. He played, he had to play by note all the time. But Donnie, he'd get up here with that trombone, and I'll tell you, that's how he caught that Medicine Lake girl to marry her. Yeah. Playing, he played all over the country. He was in Williston and all over that with his band. He, he played, he, he could take pretty much places with the dance band, but he was farming and helping his dad and stuff like that, so he could. No, he didn't want to do that. That's the way, that's music. But the Peltiers were known for a family of music. Well, but now playing, I got to... When I was growing up, I was like, mostly the church music and the Peltier music, and I was playing in the Well, they love the folk and the good music, yeah. but you know. And they had, a lot of them were related to uh, a couple of our cousins in Florence House, and they wanted to got married, and then Florence came up, and he played a couple of songs with their own band, and a couple of those guys were along, and they played a couple of songs with their own band, and so I got to talk to you now, and you were just cool, so nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to play with Frank Gables. Yeah, Frankie was one of my... I got his record here. Yeah, he plays for me. I think that's a good one. Yeah, he could play a party in two. I don't think he could. That's huge. That's the biggest award I've ever seen in my life. Well, he wasn't a little guy, you know. He wasn't a little guy either, Frankie Ankovich. When he put it up in his stomach, it just sat up there. He played once on the Well Caddy Money Show one night. I put that thing on and I just about fell off. I figured Yankovic was one of the best of them. Always did. I got the record of beer. I didn't do it yet. Frankie Yankovic. Uh, I think it's the Beer Real Polka. He could pay that for me. He was professional. He was really good, yeah. But uh, you take... Uh, oh yeah, I've heard them. Not, not too much. No, uh, I, I'm, great, I'm great for piano and organ. That's my main music. Piano and organ. I got a whole book. Frankie Carl and these girls here. We have a band that played at our school dance, the Swede Olsen and the Seven Norwegians. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Swede Olsen, the Swede and the, the Seven Norwegians. Yeah. They didn't have a date in the bunch. That's called his band, Swede Olsen yeah. and the yeah. Seven Norwegians. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't think they could. Oh, I've heard so Don Olsen, Don Olsen was a yeah, Swede and he had Seven Norwegians playing in the band with him. You remember I was telling you about this little Norwegian boy that I yeah. brought my size when he died, about 10 years old? Yeah. Well, this guy... This guy could really play an accordion, a 10-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. Keep talking. I'm just moving it over here so I get everybody. Well, I'm going to get everybody. I'm going to sing her a song. <laughs> they said, what do you, do you sing, tenor? No, sometimes I sing for five. Yeah. <laughs> five or ten, ten or twelve but, miles uh, away. <laughs> twelve or five, or what did you sing for? I used to sing in the in the church when I went to when I was going to church the, the, some of the hymns, uh -huh. and of course that's where this guy in uh, in uh, Asperia where we were, he went to the same church that we did in the Louisville, the Methodist in, in Victorville. And of course they'd hear me singing. You know, he would try to get me in the choir sometimes, and I wouldn't do it. I said, no, no. If I get up there, I'm going to sing you jazz music and nothing but jazz. <laughs> well, I never got in the choir. Well, I hear some of those people singing in church. And yeah, they got, they got the rottenest voices and they sing the loudest. Yeah. Well, I could sing loud and poor. That's why they like me. No, I mean, that. Yeah. there's a woman when they were in the church. Yeah, I know. She was singing so loud, you know, it's off key. She couldn't, yeah. she couldn't carry a tune, you know. It yeah. terrible. Yeah. Good thing they had a piano in the background, organ. Oh, yes. Stanley used to sing in 
Stanley used to sing in grade school. Now here's another one I used to sing. Nobody else, do you know what they used to do in grade school? They would dress him up, you know, he would say the Negro spiritual. They'd blacken his face and hands and put on an old overall with one strap on. And there it was, they'd find his teeth and he'd sing all the black Negro spirituals. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Is it your mom? That's what he could do best. I tell you one song I used to like, and we lived right close to the place where they where they had the play. Every every year they had that play, Ramona, down in in uh, I forget the name of that town in California. We were only a little ways from there. We were over there many times. I know when we drove all through that country by the time. Anyway, where they have Ramona, where they had the play, and uh, I met the girl, one of the first ones that ever sang, and that sang that song. At that play in Ramona, there's hundreds of thousands of people that go to that. And uh, I never did take it in, but I wished I had it. And I met her husband. We got free tickets to this place he built out, out in the, going to uh, Victorville, out in the mountains there. And it was all like a, an old fort all the way around it. And he showed nothing but old motion pictures. And all the uh, stuff from the uh, old actors and all of that were in there and showcases and that. It cost you so much to get in, and you could see an old picture. And you always hear this song, Ramona, but we didn't get to hear it because, and how I met him, I was sitting, I was coming down, down the old road, and I thought, I'd better stop and look at this place. And he was sitting outside whittling on something, oh no, fixing something. And I, I walked up to this old gentleman, and I said, uh, it was real, he was, he was way late, uh, up in his late early, the 80s. And I said to him, I said, uh, let me, uh, let me fix that for you, wouldn't you, Pop? Like that. And he looked at me and he said, well, can you do this? I said, yeah, I can fix it for you. There's something about electricity, and I've been fooling with all this stuff, all that. I do it from A to Z. I said, there's something connected with some of that stuff. And I fixed it for him. He said, thank you. He said, thank you so much. And I said, oh, that's all right. And he said, what's your name? And I said, uh, Lewis out here. And he said, uh, do you want to go inside and see things? And I said, well, not today, but I'll go some other time. And I said, I'll bring my wife with me or something like that. And he never said anything. I'd like to have your telephone number. I said, okay. So he gave me his telephone number. I went in back into the valley and I made all of the antique shops. See, I used to trade with the antique dealers on stuff that I could sell quicker than they could. And they, I had stuff that they could sell quicker than I could. See, that being in the antique, you have in the shop. So, one day I'm in this one shop there in the valley and in come this great big Cadillac. That's one of the, not one of the late matters, but I mean the real one, the big color, the stuff that had something to it. And all dressed up. She was saying, talking about a pair of set of lamps. I, this lady in there knew me, of course, and she turned around to me and she said, Lou, she said, do you know anybody where, she said, you travel around, do you know any antique shops that would have this certain pair of lamps? And I said, well, yeah, I know where they're at. She says, you do? Would you tell the lady? And I said, sure. So she came over to me, her and her mother. And she was no youngster. She was probably, she was older than I was at the time. She was probably 10 years old. She might have been around 60. Right in there somewhere. Probably a little more than that. Oh, yeah, she was more than that. I think I was around 60. She was probably around 70. But anyway, she had her little old mother with her. And she told me, well, if you can tell me, would you be so kind as to tell me? And I said, yes. And I told her, I said, you go out to Vasquez Rocks. I said, do you know where they're at? She said, no, I've never been out there. Well, I explained to her how to get there. And I said, it's on the road to Victorville, and you cut off at a certain spot. She's been out there. I said, that's where the old outlaw, Vasquez himself, holed up with his gang in the early days and robbed coaches and everything else going through there. Oh, she said, I heard of it, yes. Well, I said, up on the hill, just before you go down the hill, and go down into Vasquez Rocks, I said, up there sits a big house. And I said, there's an old wagon set up, and sitting close by, and I said, in that house is an antique shop. And I said, they don't say antiques on, on the outside, but I said, her husband works for the state of California, he's gone most of the time, so she just gets, she sells by word of mouth. I said, just like I'm telling you, in there, I said, if they're not gone, there's that set of lamps. So she sat down, took my name, my telephone number, and on they go. Thank me very much. And she 
went down. I didn't know who she was. Finally, one night, I get the telephone call. Uh, Mr. Peltier? And I said, yes. Heavy on the mister. Kidding, you know. And he said, you don't know who's calling you? And I said, no, I have no idea. Well, he said, I'd like to do something for you. He said, you know, he said, I was the first Lone Ranger on, on, and he was, the first Lone Ranger on uh, radio. The very first Lone Ranger this man was. And he said, my wife come home. Now he said, she's younger than I am, but quite a lot, but he said, she's one of the first ones to ever sing Ramona over at, uh, can't think of it there in California, you have to look at the map. Anyway, he said, I said, she did, yes. She said, she used to be an actress. And she, she was one of the first ones that sang that song at that pageant over there, years ago. So I said, fine. So he said to me, he said, uh, I want you to come by one of these times, he said. And I said, well, I, I'd go by there every once in a while because I got the grad sales out in that country. Oh, he said, well, he said, come on by. He said, I, I want to give you something. So I come by one day and stopped in there and he was there. I heard what he was. It was his wife that I had told about those lamps, see? Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I said, my gosh, I said, I, oh yeah, he said, I'm quite a little older than she is. I think about, about 20 years he was or something like that, or 15 or something. But he said, we have a wonderful life together. He said, she gets in the, all the aunt, she's full of antiques, he said, she gets it. And he said, she did get that set of lamps. She paid a big price, but he said, that's the lamp she wanted, she got it. Well, I said, God bless her, that's good for her. I was glad to find her, right? to let her know. Well, she come home with your telephone number, too. And I said, yes. She got it from me. I didn't know who she was. Or anything. Well, he said, I'm going to tell you. Here's a, you don't have to have it. I don't have to write you all, all, all one out. He said, my doorman will have your name down there. Who gets in here free? And he said, you and your wife can have a free lifetime pass in here every time you come down here. As long as you live. He said, as long as I own the place. You get a lifetime pass. And that's for that setup. See, her and she was a movie actress. I don't know what her maiden name was or not. I don't remember. But all of that. And that's what we did. We had that free. I lost the pass and I wouldn't know what had become of it or anything else. But I and Alma went by there later at times again and they were locked up. He was trying to sell it. Because he was getting up to you, getting too old to run it anyway and all this and that. And he had to have somebody, he should have kept somebody out there, you know. But, but he didn't. He, he didn't do it. And he, all he showed, showed was old time pictures. Patty R. Buckle, guys like that. You probably have seen some of those old R. Buckle pictures in the old days. Yeah, but uh, this was great. I figured that was really something. Yeah. Guys like Gabby Hayes. I met Gabby Hayes. You've seen him on pictures. Whiskers. Old Whisker, old Gabby. He was quite a guy. And then also uh, this uh, singer, uh, Tex uh, uh, Ritter. Huh? Ritter. Yeah. Trudy Madsen, I'll get it out, I've got it in there. She went to the school that this Dr. Loman had started in San Fernando Valley. And it was all for crippled children. Well, Ritter had, not John, John wasn't crippled, but his other boy was crippled, you see, son. And he had that boy there. And of course, Trudy, my niece, <coughs> where she went, because she had, she had, uh, she had, uh, oh, I forget what it was now. But anyway, she went there. <coughs> And she was kind of the grandmother above the all these other kids. She wasn't very big herself. And she walked with crutches and braces, both, too. Well, John Ritter and her, John Ritter used to show up. He all, all around these kids. And of course, Trudy took anything that Ritter had to say, because she liked his dad playing that. He'd come there every once in a while and, and play the guitar and sing for him. Text with him. So, uh, they had a big doings over there. And Trudy said to me, she says, Uncle Pop, you got to come to this doings, or I ain't going to like you. So I said, little Trudy, I couldn't turn her down. So I said, well, I'll go over with your mama and daddy. And that's when I met uh, Tex Ritter and John Ritter and, and his boy, the one that was in there with Trudy, in that place. And I'll never forget it. And boy, that Tex, he was something. He was something. I'll tell you, quite a guy. Yeah, quite a guy. Deep voice. Oh, yes. But he could sing, boy. I liked his, I liked his singing and... Uh, the way he sang it and everything, he, he had a good voice. But John Ritter, and uh, he was with him that time with his dad. And of course the other boy was there all the time. And he went to school there and he had these buses, you know. Now this little girl, 
she was the one, one year, that, I forget the year, they wanted her to be the, the uh, uh, for Easter. No. Poster girl? The poster girl for Easter. And uh, they, she, she did, they were going to fly her to Washington, D.C. to meet the president at that time. And uh, she wouldn't fly. She was afraid to fly. So they couldn't take her. They had to ha get somebody else to go to Washington. But the governor of California, who was the, was the uh, the father of the not the young governor, not not the young one, but the, his father, he was governor then. Brown. Brown, and uh, he had him come to to the uh, to the deal doings there in in uh, Sacramento. When he was governor, the older the old fellow. He was governor then. So and, governor now? Huh? Brown governor now? Oh no no no, he's been out for a long oh, time. Oh no. They got that. Uh, Finkelsteiner. I, I don't know what he's name. Anyway, why uh, they came in? They drove up there. Roger drove them up there himself. Trudy and Phyllis and himself up there. But before that took place, they went down to uh, Los Angeles, and she sat with Loretta Young in this car, and on one side of her, Loretta Young, the movie actress, and on the other side was Art. Uh, Huh? Carney? No, no. No, no. This guy was, uh, he had his own show. Linkletter? Linkletter. Link. Hard Linkletter on one side. And when it was all over with, she come home and she says to me, she says, Uncle Buck, I don't like that Art Linkletter. And I <laughs> says, why? Well, the reason she had for it was that somebody in the crowd thought they were getting thirsty, but they only had one bottle of pop, and they passed it up to Art Linkletter, and he drank it all. <laughs> and she said, he wouldn't even give me a drink. She says, other than I was thirsty, she says. She said, I don't, I don't like Art Linkletter. <laughs> now, she, she was, was the one I caught, and she called her mother over at Hammy's, the other sister. And uh, she had to prowl. She had to crawl to uh, on the floor over to get to the phone. And I, and I got a picture. I'll dig it up and after we're showing you what, what kind of work she does and where she works. She's a beautiful girl. She's in there. She's around 30 right now. I know she's around 30 years old. She was just a little girl. In that day. But she went to Sacramento. And she, they, and she loved it up in Sacramento. She thought that was great with the governor and everything. They all treated her so nice. She didn't get short of anything. But she. They had, they got, Phyllis had all the pictures of her. And where, she let somebody else have those pictures and she never got them back. And I said, oh, that's a lot of shame. You wouldn't want to forget a day or a time like that with that little girl, cripple girl, blowing up. Now one time, they brought the bus over. And she was about like that. She could walk. And the bus broke down. That was one from the Loman School, see? They're in the San Fernando Valley. And they brought, he got there, she, she was, brought the last one. They had another little girl in there, a little Mexican girl in there, yeah. That was, walked on crutches and, and uh, with braces on her legs, like Trudy, see? And uh, the bus driver come in and uh, Phyllis had went out to help Trudy out. And, uh, no, I brought Trudy in, that's right. I went out and brought Trudy in. And the bus driver come to me and said, I broke down now here. I said, and I got this little girl left. It's going to take a while, he said. She's in the bus. And here I'm sitting, here's Trudy sitting on the floor, about like that for me. And she looked up at me and she looked at me and she's sharp, you know. She come up. I said, what? What's the matter now? You go in and you bring that little girl in here and you set her on your lap and you give her some loving, she says. She don't get no loving to home. Just like that. Now I thought that was something, you know. Here that little smart aleck, that little niece of mine, telling me what I had to do. Okay? So I brought her in, sat her on my lap, and I was holding her, you know, loving her up and everything to satisfy Trudy, you know. Which you couldn't help, she was a beauty too, a beautiful little Mexican girl. Little beautiful little thing. And that was the truth. To home, they didn't pay much attention to her because she was like that. And that was wrong. Deadly wrong. I told Phyllis afterwards, I said, boy, I'd love to keep that little kid myself. I said, it's a shame that something like that has to go on in this world. But, no, that's... That's the... Uh, 
Now that thing here, you can fall off of it. Uh, no, but that is, that's a shame, you know, when the little kids are treated that way. Especially in something like that. But I wonder that... Oh, you want this one? Come no, get no, it. No, no, no. But, uh, no, I don't know. It's just, just something that happens in this world with kids like that. We've had enough of them in our family, I know. We've had them. Yeah. They rather had one, two. And Trudy went this way. And I'm taking that down to her uh, relative down at, at, the, at the pet cemetery in Great Falls. But she don't have any pictures of the family, her relatives. See, Trudy is, uh, Trudy is a cousin to her. And she never knew Trudy anything about Trudy until I told her down at that time. She says, Roger's girl? And I said, yes, it's daughter. But I said, she works practically every day. She rides down, takes the bus downtown Portland, Oregon. She's got a job down there. And I said, she, she works and she brings her money home. Because they spend a lot of money on her to get you with her well and everything. You know. Of course, the state of California did too, God bless them. Because they, the state helped take care of all of those kids down there. Dr. Lohman, he started that school, but he had to have help to do it. He was the one that come up there from the L.A. up to the San Fernando Valley in order to take care of this stuff, keep things running smoothly. And a lot of the actors and actresses were for there. Tex Witter, they liked the best because he'd sing to them and play his guitar, see. And uh, he could sing. I would listen to him. And his boy, John, he was quite there. They were good kids. All of his, his children were good children, too. All of those little kids, they were, it was pity. When you walk in there, your heart will leave you. I'm telling you, you see all of those little kids in there, in that shape. And I mean, some of them were real bad. It would break your heart. I know, and Phyllis told me, she said, Uncle Bob, she says, I know you. She says, you're tender-hearted. You don't, you'd rather get broken bone and see somebody else. And I said, yeah, you're right there. And she said, I know how you are. You can't stand to see somebody else suffer. And I said, no. I said, I can, I can stand to see it, but I, I, I always, wish it was me instead of them. And uh, she said, that's, she said, you're going to feel it when you go down there. Because she said, I've had that all of this time Trudy's been in these years. She said, before you come here. She said, Trudy's been in there since she's real small. And she said, every time I go down there, she said, that's my trouble with Vicky, Vicky too. The other oldest one. She's a sweetheart. That's the one that answered the phone this morning. She called, she was the one. And I, I had to cut her short because I usually talk a lot with her. She was one of my sweethearts. She she always called uh, Grandma Pelt here when she was small. Grandma Pelt. That's what all she could say. Grandma Pelt. She's a beautiful girl, and now look at her. She thinks the world of her. She, she's met them all. Oh, my hands. They're a wonderful family. If you ever meet them, you will know what I'm talking about. Her name is Roger Metz. Roger Metz is the husband. He's a Dane, but he can't help. He has to be Dane, and he was born that way. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's, he's a swell guy. You, you'll love that man right away. You don't have, you don't have much to say. And boy, he can make anything. He's got the machinery to do it. He can, you can take, uh, take that thing down and he can make that up to perfection, just like him. So, you can make antiques of any kind, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to want more? I made extra. He'll make them. I've had him do work for me. And this guy. And he made a uh, he made a aquarium that he made, and I think his dad hand painted the back. I don't know if it's, it stood that high. It was about as long as this, or longer. And all in the back, you could see through the water and see this hand painting. All the flowers and trees and looked like they're waving. And that water be moving around a little bit, you know, and he looked like those things. Were, I think his dad painted that. And it was put on glass, and in the front was glass. Now he made that whole thing himself. Then he got these fish in there. So one guy come along and he offered him eight hundred dollars for it. And Roger wouldn't take it. So along come another guy that Roger knew and he offered him a little quite a lot more. So Roger said, he could use the money, so he said, I'm sorry. He said, he never got the money in. He got a couple hundred dollars down and he trusted the guy and he I don't think he ever got a dime out of my house. A shame because he could make any boy, if you wanted a coffee table made. She, I had him make me one. With all the Charlie Russell's pictures in there, but he can do or mm -hmm. duplicates of them, you know, all, all painted, you know. And I had that coffee table, brought that on, and I had them so they'd all fit in there. And 
like that. And then they put this glass over the top. They're beautiful. I didn't, I didn't stay long in my possession to come. Along comes a girl and says to me one day about buying some of my stuff, and she said, hey, I forget what she gave me for it, but the price was too enormous. I couldn't hang on to it. I said, here, take it. Give me the money. Well, she took it out of it. She said, where'd you get it done? I said, my nephew makes that stuff. I said, he can make you anything. And that's what that dame does. He was a carpet layer for years, and he worked for a guy, and then he and another friend of his, they got their own, uh, their own outfit. I'm glad you had a truck. Kenny. So they got their own outfit and worked together. Boy, did they make the money. Well, Roger went all over to the state capital, California, San Francisco, and I don't, and all over around Los Angeles, and he, uh, and he went to work in it, and, uh, I don't know what he charged, but he made tremendous money after the main carpet. But he got his back. He was a big, tall, husky guy, but he got his back. He'd take them big, you know, think of them big, long carpets. And this stuff is heavy, heavy. He couldn't lift them and pick them up and go in, but he'd drag them behind him when they were old. He'd put them on something and drag it back in. Bring it out. And he got, he put that partner with and he went by himself. And then I'd go out and help him. He'd do what I go places, you know, all over the valley, places I go and spend the day with them and help them. Is that what you want? Is it in the carpet that you want? Oh no, this has been in here for 12 years. $99 for it. $100. Brand new? <laughs> Brand new? Oh! Look! <laughs> oh. I just hope this works. Get out of the way. No, you're all right there. Just pull your chair up and take it no, with you. Can, uh, no, I got a chair over there. Take it with you and sit in it. I don't need it. No, you can uh, run the machine from the chair and then. Oh, this cup did it. Thank you very much. So we've got big speakers up above there, Ken. That's what gives her the boom boom. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, maybe it's too hot for that thing in that front. Maybe it's too hot. Maybe it's too hot. Maybe it's too hot. Maybe it's too much heat for that machine. Oh, I didn't have it down in there. My goodness. I wonder, how can you make something work? We didn't get it where it belongs, huh? Oh, maybe it'll work. They say that with cameras. They want cameras in too much heat. That's another reason why I haven't got it on that. This here kind of works on me sometimes. Sometimes it looks good to get more a little bit. I guess you can use it quite a lot of the whole time. All right. There. Now we got it going.
that for that big Kurtz boy, your second cousin, the one fresh uh, school teacher that lived down by, by uh, Glacier, or Yellowstone Park in the town. They were a teacher school. Big guy. She wrote that for him, huh? Now here's Elma's song.
Well, oh, I give away the only one I had of, uh, of Johnny, little Johnny Fuel. You hear him and his gang on the to buy him. Little Johnny Pulo and his harmonica gang. You ever hear him? I give it away. I wish they had it now. Boy, you'd hear some harmonicas. Nothing in the world could take this place. They were great. If you get in Las Vegas and he was a little short guy, and he'd wear a fat wing cap, and he'd get up behind his tall guy and uh, play with the next four. And he'd pick him right in the butt. And that's when they start the music out. Yeah. I thought it was cute. You know, that little short guy, and he was the boss. Yeah. Oh, oh, he was great, Morgan. This one guy had a harmonica that long. Did they play his grand old effort? But you never heard harmonica players until you heard those guys. Those guys are really hard. I think that, I think those guys played on the grand old They might have played there sometime or another. Once they, they, they played all over. I'm talking about him. He was a man, full grown man, and you understand about that high. Yeah, but he had a little one too. He used to switch around. There were, any one of them could play any harmonica in the bunch. That's how good they were. They had to be to be with him because he was terrific. Couldn't be. I had that record here in the 33 and a third. I give it to one of the kids or somebody. I guess it like that. Came along. I just said, here, take it home. I played the, the life out of it myself. I loved that. Play, I think they played uh, the kind of music I like, like uh, uh, well, any, any of that, not more on, more on this order. This is a good harmonica record right here. I'll see who's playing that when it's done. I had more Montana Cowboys too, but I give them away. People come in, oh my gosh, can I have that? I'm going to have that one today. No more. I got this one left. I'll never give that away. That's the last of the more Oh, you're done? Oh, you are. Well, that's good. We won't get stuck in here. Just take you off now. What have we got here? We get Arbor Lights and Red Sails in the Sunset, that's an old one. Carolish, Sleepy Time Gal. And over here is, I like this one. Let me call you sweetheart, the Dan Garber, these are old, you know. And here's my buddy. Made the long since you went away. Yes, I used to love that song. I used to be able to sing it too. to this, and the girl in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, she's the one that sings it. She's the one that sings the girl from Boston, Massachusetts. But she wrote that in terms of that Kurtz boy in Montana. And she had a few of these, but that's when she died, right? Somebody has bought the records, they give them all to them. Uh, if I had you, like you heard a little while ago, that's the Muscats. That's the Muscats. They were good too. I miss you, that's by the Muscats too. Muscat. Now I'm gonna to go to Michigan. Andrew sisters. Uh -huh. now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play some old timers. Some three old ones. Right. Right, really good. I gotta change everything around here though. Right here. 